Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now, a few days ago I posted a picture of this on my Instagram. This is an iChill variant of a GTX 980 and it looks absolutely fantastic. I purchased one online hoping to showcase it in this very video, but a day or two after I bought it, the company messaged me to say that it was in fact out of stock because it had been sold to someone else moments before I purchased it. Now, I have to say I was a little bit disappointed to say the least, but after looking through my videos here on YouTube, I thought, you know what, we haven't taken a look back at a GTX 980 versus some modern games, and considering you can pick one of these up for a pretty decent price these days, um, I thought, why not? And I therefore settled on one of these. A Founders Edition... of the GTX 980 itself. Now say what you like about the cooler here, the blower style cooler, but to me I think these are among the best looking cards that Nvidia have ever made. I think they're absolutely fantastic looking. Um, the silver and black with the green logo on the top there just looks absolutely wonderful. This is of course the standard variant of the 980, not the 980 Ti, which as some of you may have seen um, can actually hold its own very well in modern titles and still compares to say the 1060 or 1070 in a lot of games. This though only features 4 gigs of VRAM as opposed to the 980 Ti 6 so it will be interesting to see how this performs when it comes to playing a few modern and demanding titles. So, the GTX 980 launched in September of 2014 at a cost of 549 US dollars. I paid just 140 pounds here in the UK for this one, which I think is a fair price considering this is a pretty desirable Founders Edition as well. Now, I'm not sure about other countries, but these Founders Editions seem to be worth quite a bit compared to other models, especially when it comes to some of these older high-end cards. Of course, the 980 wouldn't be considered that high-end anymore, but as I mentioned previously, it should still give a 1060 a good run for its money. So, the test system today comprises of my i5-9400F, 16 gigs of RAM clocked at 3200 MHz, and, of course, the card itself. Now, this card, despite the uh, heatsink, um, being the blower style is actually pretty quiet and stays pretty cool at idle at about 29 degrees Celsius. To power a card like this you're going to need two 6-pin connectors and Nvidia recommend at least a 500 watt power supply. Instead of having these set figures on screen what I've done is um, enabled the 1% and 0.1% loads in MSI Afterburner so that you can see the statistics in real time as we're playing the game because the average frame rate and the aforementioned 1 and 0.1% lows will change as you make your way through each game's levels. In Battlefield 5 you can see the average was a pretty decent one. I was using the Ultra settings here at 1080p and the game sort of stuck around 70 FPS um, during this sort of hill climb level set in France. Now the Ultra settings make this game look absolutely delightful graphically and it's nice to see that it runs well on the 982 which by the way wasn't really making that much noise at all as I said before even under these intense circumstances. Let me know if you'd like to see me keep this format in terms of the um, live on-screen statistics there or if you'd rather me write them on the screen as set numbers. Just Cause 4 at 1080p also run very well with the high settings. Now what I want to say about the 0.1% lows in some situations, especially here, is that they may appear or it may appear to be a little low. For example, it dropped to 18 in this game. You may think, well, does that mean the game ran quite stuttery? Was there any major lag spikes? And the answer to that is no. Basically, the 0.1% low figure uh, represented a single stutter that occurred during this half hour gameplay period which dropped the figure down but because this was done in real time it did make its way back up again and I think it's more important here to focus on the 1% low instead and how much that differs from the overall average frame rate which as you can see stayed above 60 in this game as well so it's another decent result for the 980. Even Metro Exodus, a modern and very demanding release, ran fine with the Ultra settings once again at 1080p. Now bear in mind I did only play through the introductory scene here. I had got further in the game but 
My save game seems to have disappeared for whatever reason. I swapped the hard drives in my PC around a little earlier on and it seems to have messed up a few of my games. But nonetheless, I played the first 20 minutes. As you can see, we saw an excellent frame rate here. This will drop a little in more intensive scenes and I'm sure you'll see a difference once you're out on the surface as well. Now you may notice that in some instances the GPU was actually running at 100% usage indicating that it was holding our system back overall. Overwatch was one of those times where the usage uh, sort of switched between 98 and 99% but overall we still saw roughly 70 frames per second with the ultra settings at 1080p meaning that once again it's a very decent gameplay experience even when playing online here. The 1% and 0.1% lows also stayed pretty solid so you can expect very limited if any stutter when playing this game on this setup. Again The Witcher 3 ran perfectly as well with at least 60 frames per second. Um, the settings here were the ultra preset under the graphical menu and then the high preset under the post processing menu. I did turn hair works off because I'm not sure how that would interfere with the frame rate. I'm not quite sure how taxing hair works would have been but to guarantee that over 60 frames per second then you're going to want to turn things like that off although anti-aliasing remained on and all of the other sliders in the graphical options were pretty much at their highest too. Now in order to retain 60 frames per second in Watch Dogs 2 at 1080p you're going to have to use the very high preset as opposed to the ultra in-game settings as well as a slightly lower form of anti-aliasing. I've also turned the San Francisco Fog option off here to make sure we don't see any unexpected dips. But I have to say the performance of Watch Dogs 2 can be quite a stuttery one anyway. Um, sometimes it will run absolutely fine. I think after about 10 minutes the frame rate sort of ironed itself out a bit and we saw very limited stutters and frame drops. But for the initial first few minutes after I fired up the game we were seeing some pretty heavy dips. Now I decided to end with a couple of games where the MSI Afterburner overlay didn't work, the first of which being Apex Legends. Here the game was set to the highest settings and we still saw at least 60 frames per second at 1080p. No matter what you're doing, um, the frame rate stayed pretty solid throughout. Another game was Far Cry 5. Since MSI Afterburner got updated or Far Cry 5 got updated last, I'm not sure which one, the overlay has stopped working, so I had to run the in-game benchmark, but this sort of told us everything we needed to know. Once again, it was a pretty flawless experience, even at the ultra settings. It seems as though the 980 has still got it when it comes to running modern titles, and even some of the most demanding ones too. So, where does the GTX 980 sit in the grand scheme of things GPU-wise and compared to some modern cards? Well, I think it's fair to say that in a lot of instances, this GPU will still compare to, say, a GTX 1060 6GB version. Now, which one should you buy between those two? Well, it totally depends on how they're priced, where you live, and you've got to remember that the 1060 has two more gigs of VRAM, uh, it's based on a newer architecture, and is more widely available, I think, simply because it's the newer card. I think if they were priced very closely where you live, then the 1060 would be the no-brainer. But enough about that, because I have to say that the 980 is still a very impressive card, and I still think it does an excellent job of running even the most modern of titles. And when you consider that it can be found for perhaps less than £150 here in the UK, which is quite close in price to a 1050 Ti, for example, I think you're getting a pretty good deal if the price is right. Remember, there is no such thing as a bad GPU, just a bad price. I can't remember where I heard that, but it makes so much sense. Let's say for a minute then you want to perhaps play at higher resolutions as well. How does a 980 handle that? Well, I went back and I ran a couple of the most demanding games on today's list, again, a 4K resolution, 3840 by 2160, and the two I chose were Metro Exodus and Battlefield 5. In Battlefield 5, all I had to do was crank the resolution up. I left the preset at Ultra, and I saw around 30 frames per second. Now, I think 30 is a more sensible sort of target to aim for with the 980, because 4K 60 FPS is going to be out of the question in most situations. 30 FPS though is more than doable a lot of the time. In Metro Exodus uh, it wasn't quite simple, I couldn't remain with the ultra settings which was probably obvious, 
but a mixture of medium and high should net you that 30 FPS average at 4K. I think though this card is certainly best suited these days to 1080p and perhaps 1440p, but having said all that, well, I really have enjoyed my time with this GPU. It's probably one of my favourite graphics cards I've ever used. And of course, if I had to give it a few more points anywhere else, I'd bring it back to that design. The silver and black with the green text looks absolutely wonderful, in my opinion. And the card still sits delightfully in any modern PC. So with all that said, and without going on too long, well, I hope you've enjoyed this video. I certainly have enjoyed making it. If you did, leave a like on it. Leave a dislike if you didn't. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Let me know if you still have a 980 Founders Edition in your system or any other Founders Edition graphics card in the comments down below. And hopefully, I'll see you all in the next one.